Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, October 3rd, 2021. We're beginning a new unit for the quarter, the fall quarter, which is entitled Call to Praise God. We're in lesson five, Call to Praise God. You may recall that our last uh, unit, unit one, was entitled God's people offer praise. God's people offer praise. And we are going to be studying a series of lesson, lessons in this unit um, that deal with calls to praise God. From the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is Only You, Only You. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 66, verses 1 to 7. Background scripture Psalm 100. Our printed passage or lesson text is Psalm 100 verses 1 to 5 or the entirety of that psalm. Our key verse is, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And that's Psalm 100 verse 3. From the quarterly, the lesson aims are number one, understand why and how God is to be worshipped as found in Psalm 100. Number two, appreciate that God is worthy to be praised. And number three, create a psalm of praise for the Lord. Uh, after the introduction, uh, this commentary has two divisions. The first is entitled, Because He Made Us. And that's covered between verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 100. And the second is entitled, Because He Mercied Us, quote unquote, Mercied Us. And that's covered between verses 4 and 5. From the standard commentary, our lesson title is Praise God with Joy. Praise God with Joy. Very briefly, additional lesson aims are, number one, describe the structure of a psalm of praise. This psalm is entitled A Psalm of Praise. That is a superscription uh, over the psalm. The second is evaluate the basis for joyous praise. And then number three, list ways he or she, that's you or me, can live that honor God as king. Um, this st the standard commentary uh, outline has three divisions uh, very quickly. The first is entitled, A Call to All. That's covered between verses 1 and 2. The second is, A Call to Know. That's covered by verse 3. And the third is, A Call to Thanksgiving. And that's covered between verses 4 and 5. I'm going to give a little background on this psalm, uh, and then we're going to have a brief word of prayer, and we're going to jump into this very familiar psalm to some of us. But as I've said many times before, uh, whenever I read or reread uh, a passage or a book in the Bible or psalm, I always learn something new always learn something new and, and we have indeed in this in this case for those who don't know the uh, the book of Psalms is actually a collection of five books or divisions uh, and they begin as follows division one with Psalm 1 division 2 or book 2 with Psalm 42 book 3 Psalm 73 Book 4 begins with Psalm 90, and Book 5 begins with Psalm 107. Our psalm, our lesson text, psalm taken from Psalm 100, is in Book 4. The emphasis in Book 4 is uh, simply God reigns. We can see that clearly in Psalm 93, 96 through 99. Um, our psalm uh, is a simple call to praise, uh, to joyous praise of God, uh, not uh, just to the Israelites, but to all the earth, to all God's creation. 
uh, and it gives the reason we are to praise him. It's, it's unclear, uh, unknown uh, who the author of the psalm was or the, the setting. It could have been uh, during the time of Moses or it could have been during the time of David. Uh, and as we will learn as we get further into the lesson when it talks of, speaks about coming before his presence and entering, coming through the gates and into the courts, could be referring to either the tabernacle in the wilderness or the temple uh, that uh, Solomon built. So it could have been in the era, if you will, of David and Solomon. So let's go before the throne and we'll get into the lesson. Father, we do thank and praise you for, Lord, your many, many seen and unseen blessings. Lord, we thank you for yet another opportunity to study your precious word. And Lord, as this is a familiar psalm, Lord, we know that uh, there's yet more to learn about uh, how we uh, should praise you, Lord, and the reason we are to praise you. Uh, Lord, certainly corporately, but individually as well, Lord. And our praise, Lord, should be an expression of our relationship with you. So help us, Lord, uh, walk more closely with you, Lord. Appreciate what you do, Lord, more fully, Lord. And, and praise you spontaneously, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we understand uh, this word more fully, Lord, uh, help us to be faithful doers, Lord, and, 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 and answer the call to praise, Lord, to praise you for you are so worthy of our praise and make our praise joyous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to... Uh, Actually, I'd like to use the divisions, um, follow the divisions from the standard commentary, and I'm going to overlay some notes that I made uh, way back in March when we did a study of this psalm, my wife and I, uh, and I'm going to attempt as we go through to answer um, three questions that the psalm, about the psalm, the what, the why, and the how questions about this psalm and about worship in general. Um, so, and verses one and two deal uh, more with the what we are called to do. Uh, verse three, as I said, deals with why we are called to do it. And verse four and five deal with how we are called to do it, and we'll get uh, into more specifics as we get into the lesson. So, first, the division from the standard is a call to all. And verse 1 reads Verse 1a Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, what is um, a joyful noise? This, this really could have been translated shout. Uh, we see this uh, in, in Psalm 41, 47, 1. Uh, it, it, that, that's the sense of the word, to make a shout, a joyous shout, uh, with some volume, with some excitement. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's translated also um, uh, a triumphal cry in Psalm 41, uh, verse 11 in Psalm 68. So these shouts are to be accompanied by clapping of the hands, singing, using instruments, but it's a, a joyful noise. I mean, not a racket, but it's enthusiastic and it's, and it's uh, loud. And uh, for those who think that there's something wrong with uh, having music in the church and celebrating in our worship service of uh, the goodness of the Lord. Uh, this psalm clearly uh, speaks against that, uh, that, that notion or that train of thought. And it says, that same um, first part of the verse says, unto the Lord, and it's all caps, which means uh, Yahweh. Uh, it's, he is the self-existent one, uh, it, it, and, it, it, and, and it really, uh, means that he is the ultimate king and sovereign of, uh, of, of all. 
And the second part of that verse says, all ye lands. And that really is, he is really speaking of all the earth, uh, all the territories, all the nations. Uh, and he is all the people groups of the earth. So this is a call for all of God's creation, uh, all of his created people to worship him by making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, we're going to see um, as we go through the psalm that the psalmist seems to refer specifically to the Israelites. However, uh, it could also be referring to people in general, uh, to all people. So, uh, and certainly it, can, it applies to all those who know the Lord who have trusted the Lord as their Savior and their God. So uh, we're not going to get bogged down uh, when it appears that he's speaking uh, to or about the Israelites. Verse 2, A, serve the Lord with gladness. Now, our service should the Lord to the Lord, our worship, the serve means to worship, should not be something uh, uh, dull or something that we... Uh, we don't look forward to that we regret or that we uh, uh, do uh, with a, a woeful attitude but we are to be glad in our worship realizing who we're worshiping and why we're worshiping him so we are to serve or worship the Lord joyfully you know uh, and we see that throughout the Old Testament Numbers 10 10 Chronicles 30, 21, and we see throughout where uh, we are, uh, where the Lord calls his people to serve him, and and actually um, other writers call for the Lord's people to serve him. And this can be contrasted to if this psalm was written uh, in the, uh, uh, in, the, in, the Mo in Moses' time, if you will, uh, a contrast between how they serve Pharaoh, which was mournfully, <laughs> woefully uh, in bondage, uh, and how they're serving the Lord in the liberty that God has given them and the joy uh, that he's given them, releasing them from their bondage. We have been released from bondage to sin, and we should rejoice and serve the Lord with gladness because of that. Two part to part B, come before his presence with singing. We are to sing before the Lord joyfully. Uh, this, uh, we were to celebrate uh, when we enter into his presence. Uh, the first time I think we hear of uh, the people of, of God singing, uh, we read this in our first, uh, first uh, lesson in this uh, quarter, uh, when they, when the Lord parted the Red Sea, and Moses' song after they got on the other side, crossing through the Red Sea on dry land, and then Miriam and the women uh, picked up the song and sung God's praises for what He had done, uh, and we see that again uh, invocations to praise the Lord throughout the Bible, throughout the Old Testament, and certainly the New Testament as well, and we have much to sing to the Lord to praise the Lord in our song about much to celebrate uh, in when we look back at what the Lord has done for us we're going to say more about that as we go further we have much to celebrate be, uh, and when we look back at what the Lord has brought us through and how he is keeping us even now and when it says in that portion of the verse come before his presence uh, it may be coming before uh, the ark of the covenant even though we know only the high priest was able to go into the holy of holies and only once a year but coming in the vicinity of the ark that represented the presence of the Lord among his people Israel and uh, and and of course uh, this coming before his presence might have symbolized that. Obviously, we know that we are actually indwelt by the Holy Spirit. 
and we don't have to go before uh, to a certain place. Uh, he is with us, uh, and we can praise him at any time. We are in his presence always. So let's just look back at these two verses, which, as I said, describe the what, what it, the people are, of the world are being called to do. Uh, and that is express genuine joy with shouts and singing and serving or worshiping the Lord with gladness. Uh, these should be shouts of, uh, or songs, if you will, of praise, thanksgiving, loyalty, and homage expressing the highest regard and respect for our Lord and King. And we do that genuinely when we reflect on what he has done for us personally. When we reflect on the bondage to sin we were in and his bringing us out of darkness into his marvelous light and how he's blessed us uh, materially and certainly but spiritually uh, in so many ways. Uh, since he called us into his life. So we're going to move into the second division, which is entitled A Call to Know. And in this division, we're going to find out the why we are being called to worship and praise the Lord. So verse 3a says, Know ye that the Lord, again all caps, Jehovah, he is God, or he is the one and only God in counter distinction to all the pagan gods, the pantheon of pagan gods. He is the God. And this, uh, in the Old Testament, was the same as the confessions that the Christians made that Jesus was Lord. Jesus was the Lord and only Lord uh, and God. And, and uh, of course, in the first century, uh, a confession of that of that confession, I should say, was tantamount to denying the deity of Caesar or any other so-called god, and it was a scandal, and it could have led to the Christians' death. In fact, it did, uh, when many Christians refused to uh, to offer a pinch of salt and and just confess that Caesar was Lord. Uh, many of them were were put to death. Uh, and so this was uh, a confession of similar, again, in the Old Testament, that the Lord is God, the one and only God. And, and therefore, uh, we are uh, to worship and praise him, but he goes further. Part B of verse 3 says, It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Now, obviously, and I know if you read the NIV, it doesn't, it doesn't include, reads a little differently. It doesn't include, uh, it is he that made us and not we ourselves. It reads, uh, know that the Lord is God. It is he who hath made us, and we are his people, and are his, we are his, rather, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Now, uh, I think the reason uh, it was translated uh, the way it was in the King James, which says we have, he, we are his people. Uh, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and we are the sheep of his pasture is because it is speaking of Israel. He made them as a people. He called out uh, from uh, Ur of the Chaldees, Abraham, and from his seed, he made a nation uh, uh, that he uh, uh, gave his oracles and that he brought the Christ, the Messiah, through. And through Abraham, he said, all the nations of the, the earth will be blessed, and they have been blessed through the Messiah or through Jesus Christ. Now, um, he says... So they didn't make themselves. <laughs> uh, God made them. Certainly he created every human being. So that's, that's a, a no-brainer there. But he made them as a people. It says, so when it says we are his people, it's speaking of Israel there. But all those who have confessed Jesus as Lord 
or his people or uh, the Lord's uh, people. And it says we, it says, and the sheep of his pasture. And this is a very, very common refrain throughout the Psalms. Uh, we, we're all familiar with Psalm 23 and so many other places in the Bible. But what what is what is the author saying? He is saying that sheep, we are sheep, and sheep, if you know anything about them, are the most helpless uh, of animals, uh, as you can uh, imagine. They have no natural uh, means of defense, uh, no fangs, no claws. They can't run fast. Uh, they don't. They have no natural homing in thinks they're afraid of, of about anything, even running water, uh, and they're too stupid to come out of the cold when they when they have young that might freeze to death uh, beside their mothers. So they're they're very and and they have to be cared for. They have to be led. They have to be uh, protected, and that is what uh, the what God does for us. We know that the Lord Jesus himself said that he was what the good shepherd. Look at John, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse, verse 16. I'm sorry, that's verse 14. He continues through 16 in talking about um, uh, him being a shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by, of, by my own. And he says, as my father knows me, even so I know the father and lay down my life for the sheep. He is the good shepherd and he contrasts himself with the hireling who runs when the wolf comes. But he is the good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep and he's laid down his life for us sheep, um, helpless, uh, defenseless, uh, Idiots, <laughs> really, who have no moral, no moral compass aside from uh, God's standards. All right, so we are to praise God for that, for being a good shepherd. Uh, that is one of the things we are to praise Him for, for creating us uh, and for caring for us in every needed way. I need to back up um, just a little bit <clears throat> the first part of the verse, verse 3, where it says, Know ye that the Lord, he is good. When it speaks of knowing, it means um, more than a mere intellectual perception. It means to have a profound awareness uh, of, of God, okay, of his person, of his, of his character. Um, we look at uh, Deuteronomy 34:10, uh, and 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 we and 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 we affirm uh, our faith in someone that we know that we know on an intimate basis, uh, and we can be assured. Uh, that verse really tells us that we could be assured of the truth of. Uh, the that he is the one and only God. Again, uh, uh, it, it goes on to refer to the sheep of his pasture, and we know that uh, that he and God, um, he and Christ rather, uh, share uh, all the same non-communicable attributes. So Christ is our shepherd, good shepherd, who gave his life for the sheep. Let's look at division, at the third division, which is entitled, A Call to Thanksgiving. Um, and that's covered between verses four and five. Verse four reads, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, entering into the gates, uh, these are believed to uh, have been uh, the entrance to the temple grounds or if it was uh, the tabernacle, the tabernacle grounds uh, and 
beyond the gate that was that led to the ground was the courtyard and there was a courtyard that actually surrounded the the entire temple and of course this was open to uh, the public and was open to all Israelites and uh, and certainly there was a there was an inner court that was uh, designated for the priest uh, but this court that's being referred to is one that is open to all so we are call to enter go through the gates with thanksgiving uh, uh, in other words we're to and with praise uh, we are uh, when you come to worship uh, you, you, you are to bring an offering uh, certainly in the days of the sacrifice you, they were to bring a, an offering well what, what offering are we to bring even now when we enter into the church, when we come for worship, what are we to bring besides our monetary gifts? What are we to bring? We are to bring thanksgiving and praise. Uh, I'm going to take a look at Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. I'm going to read this from the New King James Version. And it says, Therefore, by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to him, to his name rather. We are to offer continuous praise, the, 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 the sacrifice of our lips. And so uh, that is what we bring to worship. And we're to do that uh, with joy. We're to do the, <clears throat> offer this thanksgiving and this praise with joy. And this word praise uh, really has the meaning of uh, exalting one. In this case, exalting God for, for what he has done. Uh, and basically enumerating what he has done. You know, he's the creator, he's the sustainer, he's all powerful, he's the deliverer, he delivered them from, from bondage in Egypt, he brought them through the wilderness. Uh, uh, without their shoes wearing out, he fed them manna. He 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 he, he brought water from the rocks. There's so many things that they had to to extol him for, uh, and and list those things as they offered him praise. It's basically bragging on God, and we're to do that when we praise Him. We're to reflect on what God has done for us, and I mean to the extent we can recall specific things. You know, Psalm 103 <laughs> says, this is a verse in Psalm 103 says, forget not all his benefits. And, and there's two ways to, to, to look at that. Forget not all of them as in forget none of them or don't forget them all. You know, and I think uh, either way you look at it, we are to remember to the extent we can the benefits, what God has done for us and praise him for those things and what he continues to do for us it's not that uh, he blessed us once and he does not continue to bless for us and by him being our shepherd he is our comfort he is our our constant rather caregiver and protector and provider if you read through the psalms uh, you will learn how to enumerate the things that <laughs> we are to praise God for. I mean, Psalm 90, for example, it starts off, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight, or like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night and it goes on and there are many psalms of praise that list what God had done for his people and as we praise him we are to admire his character his holiness uh, his righteousness uh, his steadfastness uh, his 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 all powerfulness to deliver us from any from any circumstance and from any situation and his great love for us uh, he so loved us that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life 
and 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 and, and in Romans eight, uh, you know, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things, all things that we need, not everything that we desire, but certainly those things that we need. Verse five. I'm, I'm going to read five entirely, and then we'll come back and read five a uh, and have some discussion on that and five b. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Okay, now we are discussing the why we are to praise. For the Lord is good. You remember Jesus told the rich young ruler when he called him good master, he said, why call ye me good? There's none good but one, and that is God. God is good. God is perfect. God is holy. And this is an affirmation of that, his goodness. And we would know, not know anything about goodness were it not for God. God is the, uh, the ultimate. Uh, he is the epitome of everything that is good and everything that is right. And then he goes on to say, his mercy is everlasting. Now, he's good and his mercy is everlasting. This word mercy uh, can be translated kindness, can be translated favor, uh, uh, and uh, we, we know that uh, it can be can, it can be translated love as well. And it says it is everlasting. That means it endures. Uh, it does not fail. Uh, and, and 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 this is something that God extends to uh, to sinners. Uh, you may have learned uh, that mercy is the flip side of uh, a two-sided coin on one side is grace and on the other side is mercy uh, grace is is a God's unmerited favor and that is giving us what we don't deserve uh, and uh, mercy is God's not giving us the due punishment that we do deserve so it is his compassion it is his kindness and loving kindness and it is his favor uh, that, uh, it, uh, that uh, causes him to forgive our sins. And that is everlasting. And he goes on to say in the second part of that verse that and his truth endureth to all generations. His truth, his truth can be translated his faithfulness, his steadfastness, and and it really is derived from a uh, a root word, a verbal root from uh, which from the verbal root that we get the word amen from or amen from, uh, and it it really is an affirmation or affirmative response to what has just been said. When somebody says something that's true, like a minister. Uh, speaks the truth and we say amen and that is we're saying true and very true what you're saying is true Jesus would say amen amen or verily verily which means true true uh, and to to emphasize uh, what he was about to say verily verily I say unto you and the, and the verity of what he was about to say so his truth his faithfulness his steadfastness is it endures it is it is permanent okay to all generations the same uh, truth the same steadfast loyalty the same provision uh, the same character the same promises that God kept for the generation that had preceded uh, the generation of the author of this psalm uh, he was steadfast in providing that to his generation. And the psalmist knew that he would be providing that to his children, his grandchildren, and his grandchildren's children's children. And we can have that same assurance that the Lord tarries. God is faithful. He's going to be faithful to all those. He's going to be faithful, period, to his word. 
and 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 and, and of course his word uh, is, is a blessing to those who trust him and certainly it can be damnation for those who don't trust him uh, because they don't put their faith in him they don't accept the, uh, the the payment for the sin that his son has already made and they will make that payment themselves which is uh, which is everlasting separation from God. So to summarize this section of the uh, this division of our lesson, uh, the how uh, we are to enter His courts uh, gates uh, to the open courts of the temple, our place of worship for all. In our case, into the the sanctuary, into the worship place, our church with praise for all God's goodness, his grace, his faithfulness, and his steadfastness, and unchanging friendship and love, and with thankfulness and praise of his name, that is, his reputation, his authority, uh, and all that, uh, that that means, and with joyful shouts and singing, with joyful shouts and singing so in in summary um, one of the commentators uh, this is a portion of his conclusion says the Lord is God he is the creator he is our shepherd he is our good and he is good and faithful we are his people the sheep for whom he cares generations before us have experienced his goodness and until our Lord Jesus returns, all generations who follow us are invited to experience his steadfast mercy and kindness as well. And, and I wrote a summary when I, I said I did a study of this lesson uh, a few months ago uh, that basically reads, uh, it reads, uh, in summary, uh, when we worship uh God, we want to focus solely on the object of our worship, our sovereign Lord and Savior, and realize He is our audience of one. We want, to the greatest extent possible, uh, to realize why uh, He is so deserving of our worship and worship Him in a manner that is pleasing in His sight, expressing our adoration to Him and clearly proclaiming his word to the extent and in keeping with the instructions from his word we want to establish again as a tenet for our congregation that our worship implore and inspire all worship all rather to worship our Lord with joyful singing and music praise and thanksgiving all lands and all peoples believers and unbelievers and all generations. Our sincere joy in the Lord for who he is, what he has done for us, and what he has promised to do in his faithfulness, patience, holiness, and great love for us should be contagious to those who don't know him and create a desire in them to come to know him. A brief survey of the Psalms alone teaches us that his faithfulness, righteousness, mercy, counsel, and his name are all to be remembered through all generations. And he is our dwelling place through all generations. We are to teach our children and children's children to worship him in truth and with great joy. And from Psalm 150, verse 9, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Father, we do thank and praise you for Lord, this inspiring psalm, this, this psalm that calls us to worship you with joyful noise, Lord. Uh, and from the depths of our heart, Lord, for all that you've done for us, what you're doing and for what you've yet promised to do. And I pray, Lord, that we would, uh, with more fervor and more spontaneity, Lord, and more frequency, frequency praise you and the days ahead. We just thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to, to study your word and to be inspired and instruct, instructed by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We would like to encourage uh, all of you who would like to participate in an interactive Sunday School class uh, to do so on Saturday afternoon beginning at 4.30. Uh, I believe it runs to uh, 6 p.m. And you can do that by calling number the number phone number 1605-475-4000. Again, that's 1605-475-4000. And keying in the access code 314-325-POUND. 314-325-POUND. Um, they uh, are providing an excellent class, which is facilitated by sisters Quincy Humphrey and Jeanette Brown. So please tune in Saturday afternoon between 4.30 and 6 p.m. May God bless you.